Hello everyone. Today let's explore the condition called as endophthalmitis. So this is a severe inflammation of the eyes internal structures, mainly the vitreous and the aqueous humors. It is typically caused by an infection that is not recognized and treated quickly can lead to severe or permanent vision loss. So remember guys that endophthalmitis can be triggered by bacteria or fungi and may occur after surgery, trauma or via bloodstream spread called as endogenous infection. Now let's look at what commonly causes endophthalmitis. Bacterial pathogens are most frequent culprits. In this, coagulase negative staphylococci are notably common in post-operative cases. And other bacteria, examples like Staphylococcus aureus can also be involved, sometimes leading to more aggressive disease course. And when we speak about uh, the fungal organisms, especially candida species, lead to more gradual chronic presentation and typically arise from hematogenous dissemination or from external contamination in immunocompromised individuals. So what is the route of infection? It can be of two types, exogenous and endogenous. So when we talk about the exogenous route, which occurs when microorganisms directly enter the eye. So commonly follows intraocular surgery such as cataract extraction or can occur after penetrating trauma. And post-operative infections remains a leading cause of exogenous endophthalmitis. And when we explore about endogenous causes, these organisms travel via bloodstream to the eye from a distant focus of infection, for example, maybe from infective endocarditis. So the patients may have systemic signs of infection or an underlying immunocompromised condition. So these are the two routes where the infection can be spread. Now let's move on to the clinical features of endophthalmitis. So how the patients typically present. So the clinical manifestations can vary from a sudden painful onset that is acute to a slower more insidious course that is chronic. So first I will give a few important points about acute endophthalmitis which is having rapid onset of symptoms often within few days of surgery or trauma and a severe deep-seated ocular pain and a dramatic drop in the visual acuity can be seen in the acute conditions. And there will be redness, lid swelling, corneal haze or edema and hypopion that is pus in the anterior chamber are the most common features in the acute presentation. And a relative afferent pupillary defect can be noted if there is a significant retinal involvement is there. So all these are the acute manifestations of endophthalmitis. And when we talk about the chronic endophthalmitis which develops more gradually which is over weeks or even months which is often caused by less virulent bacteria or by fungi like candida. So vision loss is progressive rather than sudden what we have seen in acute. And the patients may complain of floaters, especially in fungal cases. Unlike to that of acute condition, pain may be mild or absent initially, leading to delay in diagnosis. So this is the chronic presentation. Now let's move on to the diagnosis part. So accurate and swift diagnosis is very, very critical, mainly to prevent complications of endophthalmitis. So to diagnose the endophthalmitis, we rely on both clinical findings as well as on the diagnostic tests. So first, a very important one is the slit lamp examination, which mainly reveals uh, 
corneal haze or edema and there will be aqueous humor and uh, vitreous opacities sometimes with hypopion in the anterior chamber which are the main findings which can be seen on the slit lamp examination. And when we see the fundoscopic exam which may show diminished or absent red reflex due to vitreous clouding and the retinal vessels can be hard to visualize in the bacterial endophthalmitis. But in the case of fungal infections which may present with white fluffy lesions on the retina or in the vitreous which is called uh, often call it as snowballs or nodules. So, wrath spots can occasionally be seen in the setting of systemic disease like uh, endocarditis which means if the route is endogenous in nature and next is the microbiological tests. So, samples of aqueous or vitreous fluid can be taken for the culture, gram staining or fungal staining. So, that is the reason identifying the causative organisms is very crucial for targeted therapy. Now finally about the treatment part. As I already mentioned it is an emergency condition. We need to act very quickly because every moment we delay treatment we risk permanent ocular damage. So intravitreal injection is important as immediate intravitreal antibiotics for the bacterial infections often broad spectrum to cover both gram positive and gram negative organisms are mainly recommended in such cases and intravitreal antifungals like amphotericin B for fungal infections is most important uh, treatment we can say and when we talk about the systemic therapy so additional intravenous antibiotics or antifungals if there is systemic involvement or risk of widespread infections. Next, what is the role of vitreectomy? Surgical infection of the vitreous humor helps to clear the infectious load and improves drug penetration into the eye. So this is the management part guys. And before we conclude, let's discuss about the complications. So even with timely intervention, complications may or can arise. So underscoring the importance of early detection and aggressive treatment. So permanent vision loss or severely reduced visual acuity can be a most important complication we can say. There will be a cases of retinal detachment which may require additional surgical intervention. So these are the most important complications what we see in endophthalmitis. So by this we concluded the most important topic in the ophthalmology which is endophthalmitis.